Is The Flash the greatest superhero movie ever made? I'll let you decide after I tell you the whole story. Spoiler alert. Once upon a time, Barry Allen ran so fast he went back in time and tried to save his mom from getting stabbed. But a monster punched him out of the multiverse. This monster is important later on. The reason why his her mom died is that her mom forgot to buy a can of beans. Spaghetti sauce. Spaghetti sauce. And so his dad had to go to the grocery store and buy the spaghetti sauce. Uh, when he came back, that's when the mom got stabbed. What's worse, his dad was accused of the murder. We don't know who the perpetrator was and it, it's not important to know, I think. But I was curious. I was curious why he didn't go find out who did the stabbing and then just stab them. <laughs> you know, just kill that person. And so Barry used the multiverse to go back to the moment her mom went shopping. He puts a can of spaghetti sauce in her shopping cart. As a result, her mother didn't get stabbed. I love you, mom. I love you too. But changing little details of the past is bad, according to Ben Affleck. And Bruce Wayne basically explains to him what we all know from so many time travel movies that have been made, that if you change one small thing, it could have a ripple effect, which is the butterfly effect. And that butterfly is General Zod, who wants to conquer the Earth. What's he going to do with the Earth? They're going to make it into Krypton, basically, and so that they could live there. And so he's going to terraform it. And that's my biggest complaint of the movie. I mean, how many times are we going to see General Zod show up for the same type things? You're just giving me PTSD. You're reminding me of a movie that I hate. I don't want to watch Man of Steel, where it's just disaster porn, and we're going to just destroy the world, and it just seemed out of place. It didn't seem to work. But General Zod isn't the real villain. It's Barry himself. I love you, Bob. I love you, too. See you in the next video. The relationship between Ezra Miller and Ezra Miller is everything that makes this movie work. Was there a contrast to their character? Or were they different people? Well, yes, because the younger one still has his mom. He doesn't know what it's like to grow up without a mom. You, you take it for granted, whatever. And the older Barry, he's a completely different person because of the challenges that he's had to grow up without, well, actually without either parent, because his father, he's been in jail his whole life. So he's had to learn how to be an adult and take care of himself. He also realizes that he's got a huge problem. He can't just make his younger self disappear. I think he wanted to kill that guy. <laughs> yeah. Should I just choke him or something? <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I wish I could go back in time and slap my younger self. So I can understand this very much. He met his younger self on the day he was about to get his power. Right. And so the younger Barry needs to get hit by lightning or else the older Barry won't have powers in the future. So he took the, the younger Barry Allen's like, okay, sit down, sit right here, and then you're gonna hit, get hit by lightning. It's like, what? And then time was running out, lightning strikes, and they got both hit by lightning. And then their roles reversed. The older Barry loses his power, and the younger Barry gets his power, which creates more comedy, and the uh, relationship between the two of them was the most interesting thing in the movie, and more chances for their characters to interact and grow. This movie is funny, especially that scene where they make fun of Barry's slow-mo run. Now, it was all set up because at the start, Barry does this corny, ready, set, go stance and run fast with overemphasized arm swinging. And when they made fun of it, the whole theater laughed. Then Barry realizes that only Superman can defeat a fellow Kryptonian like General Zod. Batman helps them in fighting Superman, but instead they find Supergirl. So Batman and Barry were looking for Superman, but instead they found Supergirl in Area 51. She was weak after living in darkness for years. The moment she was hit by the sun, that was a great sequence. That was one of the better sequences in the movie. My name is Kara. I, I'm Barry. Well, we're Barry. Um, she was looking for the baby, the baby Superman. I think she was the, the cousin of Kael. Kal-El, which is Superman. And then she finds out that Zod killed Kalel. What did you do? And that's when she got mad and the laser eyes. That was a great moment. This girl can act. Now, later in the movie, when they decide that they're going to try to recreate the lightning again to give the original Barry his powers back. But it failed. The lightning almost killed him. And then Kara comes down she's had almost no communication with them and she just picks him up and flies him up into the sky to get struck by lightning and I, and I just was thinking how does she even know what's going on but the next scene is good it kind of made up for that plot hole 
You came back. I'm glad you're okay. I have to ask you something. When you found me in that hole that they put me in, and I wasn't kal why did you help me? Because you needed help. Do you know what this symbol stands for? Supergirl? It means hope, right? Hope, yeah, does it mean hope? The two Barrys actually feel like different people here. I must agree with Jim. Yes. I will help you fight Zod. And so, our new Justice League for 30 minutes only attacks General Zod and his alien army. But first, the younger Barry falls in love with Supergirl. He's already named their kids, Barry Jr. and Little Kara. Barry, what are you doing? Our kids are gonna wanna see this. And this love affair is important. But this is what happens when you put Batman, who's just a man, fighting Kryptonians. It just makes Batman look that much more ineffectual. He's shooting guns, has no effect. Nothing that he does works. It just makes Batman look out of place. I just felt bad. I felt bad for him. Barry tried so many times to save Kara and Michael Keaton. And it didn't seem to make a difference. It, it becomes obvious that in this universe, the world is going to end. Zod is going to be, he's going to be successful. No one's going to stop him. Batman's going to die. Supergirl's going to die. So at the end of this movie, it just seemed like it was a waste of time. Although I think it's a waste of time for a reason. Because this is when we find out that the real villain is Barry himself. If he didn't put the spaghetti sauce in the shopping cart, the whole General Zod thing would have never happened in the first place. The older Barry was willing to let his mom die, but the younger Barry wants no one to die. Nobody dies! Including the love of his life, Kara. But while they're arguing, the multiverse gifted us with an ungodly amount of cameos for some reason. It was like DC was going, here's all of our stuff. <laughs> Part of it was cool, sure. Especially for people that are old enough to remember George Reeves. Christopher Reeves? No, this is George Reeves, the 1950s, black and white. How are they related? No, different name. George Reeves, Christopher Reeve. No S on the end. Wow, that's pretty close. So it is ironic, though, isn't it, that they both have similar names. They both played Superman. They both died young. That's why they call it the Superman curse, because he died young and he was murdered. Christopher Reeve also died young, tragically, from when he was paralyzed. And then all of a sudden, you see the Superman. He turns around. And who was it, Paul? Nicolas Cage. And everybody's like, what? I, I laughed so hard. It's like, oh, I'm all for this. I laughed as well, but... Why did they put Nicolas Cage in there? Nicolas Cage was supposed to be Superman. That was the talk for like 10 years, Paul. It's like an inside joke. Like, they put this in the movie. It's like DC's like, oh, you wanted that Nicolas Cage Superman movie? Well, here it is. <laughs> you, get, you get one minute of Nicolas Cage as Superman. In the end, there's another Batman. Once again, an embarrassing property. Batman vs. Robin is the worst Batman. They actually asked Christian Bale, but I think Christian Bale said no. He was smart. He was like, I, I don't want to be in this. In the next video, let's talk about the ending where I cried and embarrassed myself in the theater. Is The Flash the greatest superhero movie ever made? Well, maybe because the ending made me cry. Here's how it happened. Remember that monster I said was important earlier? Turns out it was the younger Barry stuck in the multiverse for a thousand years now, trying to undo the past but failed every time. And so, older Barry made the difficult decision of killing his younger self. But what's even more difficult was returning the spaghetti sauce and letting his mom die. The moment he started taking away that can of beans, that can of spaghetti sauce, I, I started to get chills and then I hope I won't cry. I'm going to embarrass myself. <laughs> so, okay, here we go. Oh, no, he's actually going to do this. And then he returned it. And then the moment there was a tear from his eyes, like, oh, sh**. I just started crying and I looked at the person beside me and then they were also crying. Anybody that has a mother is going to have that kind of reaction. No one can prepare you for these kinds of moments in a movie. And when it just happens, you have no control emotionally. When Barry became unselfish and sacrificed her mom for the sake of humanity, that was the victory. So when characters change in a movie in the end, that gives you the feels, you know? Yeah, and that's why I can't agree with some of the criticisms I've seen where it's just, he's just obnoxious. He, it's the obnoxious Ezra Miller for two hours. It's like, did you watch the movie at all? Like his character grew from being obnoxious to being mature because he had to, he had to sacrifice. He had to grow up and you're watching 
that happened throughout the movie. That was a great character arc. It went full circle in the end. It was pretty well written from a character development standpoint. The Flash isn't one of the greatest superhero movies ever made. But if we tell you it's bad just because of Ezra Miller, we'd be lying. And if we say it's bad just because that's what our favorite YouTubers are saying, personally, they're my favorite, and I just go with the flow, then our little YouTube channel doesn't need to exist. Now, we may get a lot of hate for this review, but we need to tell you the truth, or no one else would trust us. But if you don't want to watch it, that's totally understandable. I can understand when people don't want to give their money. I actually thought about that. I was like, maybe I don't want to give my money to this because I don't want to support this guy if he's what he's alleged to be. And I thought about this when we were kids, when I was a kid, when we didn't have Twitter and we didn't have 24-hour news cycles, people that were in movies were just actors and we didn't know about their personal lives as much. It may sound like I'm defending him. I'm not. I'm just saying that we would have watched movies with people that were probably horrible people and never knew. So that's up to people. If you're not comfortable because this guy is a creep, by all means, don't, don't see it. The Flash is not one of the greatest superhero movies ever made, but it was good enough to make me care. So that was our experience with The Flash. If you've seen it, please let us know in the comments below about your experience too. Thanks for watching.